Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So, we meet again. <coughs> For this week, we will cover the chapter 5, which is the extrusion process. Okay, uh, as usual, uh, I like to mention about this. Uh, this extrusion machine is similar to the extrusion machine that we covered in machinery, uh, polymer machinery last semester. I did teach you about the extrusion. But in this uh, code, uh, PSA 371, we will uh, cover the whole process of the plastic fabrication using the extrusion process. So there is a few types of extrusion that commonly used in industry. So you might want to identify <coughs> what of the product that being produced uh, using extrusion machine and how the process involved. Okay, the learning outcome uh, at the end of the chapter, you should be able to state a uh, type of extrusion machine used in different plastic products. So as I mentioned earlier, there are a few types. Describe the main, main component extrusion machine. I think this one is very familiar with you. Last semester, I did cover each of the component of the machine. But for this code, we will cover more and we will highlight more on a specific component which uh, uh, what we call differentiate each of the types of extrusion. Okay, and then explain the concept and working principle of extrusion machine. Discuss the extrusion process defect, causes, and remedies. And finally, discuss the developments of the injection molding process. <coughs> okay, some introduction. Extrusion is a process by which a material is forced to flow in a more or less, less continuous manner through a forming die which is shaped to produce a required cross-section. For example, a toothpaste. So you, how you extrude the uh, toothpaste in uh, casings, it is uh, how the process of extrusion evolves. Okay, the equipment to perform the extrusion is called extruder. Uh, objective of extrusion process is to produce a long section profile of a constant cross section. Okay, uh, slightly differ from injection molding last chapter I did cover. Extrusion process is a continuous process that produces a constant cross-section uh, articles. Okay, so this is basically the illustration, uh, the whole process or, or the whole uh, production lines of the uh, extrusion process. So we have extruder, the extrusion parts. Uh, we have a raw material that go through the extruder parts. We have the extrusion die that giving a shape of your uh, continuous uh, articles or parts. And then going to that cooling area or cooling section and uh, went off to the uh, cutting off. <coughs> okay, nothing much to worry about this. And then, uh, okay. Some interaction, we have some of the example of wire coating in melt, for example, other than uh, hollow parts, we could also produce um, coated parts, uh, components or articles, which is uh, the very common with us is a wire coating. Okay, as we know, each of the wire being coated by the polymeric material, okay, uh, to prevent any conductivity during, uh, we call that the adherence of uh, these two wires. So uh, here, the raw material will be melt and cover the wi uh, wire core uh, during the extrusion process. <coughs> and then we have also uh, melt spinnings. Uh, usually this one is through a series of uh, um, what we call the, the continuous article that will be uh, wind up uh, to produce uh, more um, strings or wires of uh, extruded parts okay and then we have substrate coating and then we have uh, uh, what we call uh, this is the uh, um, coated substance okay uh, it can be either uh, fabric can be either a pepper or other polymeric material itself and then you coat it with other polymeric material so each of the uh, <clears throat> Substrate coating can be either uh, single ply, two ply, or multiple ply. Okay, it depends. Okay, mm. betul kalau kita tengok kadang-kadang substrate tu atas dengan bawah dia lain. Uh, for example, uh, you you can see that there is a, what we call that tika getah. Some of the tika getah, okay, uh, PVC mat ni, uh, 
PVC mat There is uh, woven fibers Atau woven nylon At the bottoms of this surface And then the top surface will be a, a PVC uh, Melted PVC Plasticized PVC And then the another top layer will be A, a coating layer Okay, ah, sebab tu tiga kita nampak cantik dari coating layer dan PVC and bawah sekali kita ada substrate <coughs> and then we have other uh, rubber product article that being extruded this is the article that being produced okay, usually kita guna benda ni dekat bahagian-bahagian penjuru-penjuru untuk cover atau untuk uh, apa what we call that to as we know the rubber material is very elastic material it can be squeezed Uh, so that it can fit any um, clearance Okay, kalau kita tengok kat sini Mungkin dekat bahagian peti ais Tepi peti ais ada getah Tepi tu ada silikon That one is rubber silikon that be extruded Okay, so that bila awak tutup peti ais Dia tak akan bumping, tak akan bunyi kuat Dan dia akan retain the What we call the, the um, Temperatures of the uh, freezer So that it, it not um, goes away And then uh, dia tak akan bagi kompresor untuk bekerja lebih lah. Okay. Ada produk also being extruded uh, using extrusion machines. Okay. <coughs> The working principle. Okay. Uh, for extrusion machine, it is a simple process for producing continuous length of a product at a constant cross section. Okay. The components of the extrusion line are relatively similar whatever type of extruder is used. Okay. Saya suka cakap benda ni sebab although Uh, eventually, we will uh, uh, cover each of the types of the extruder, okay? But the the process and component is relatively similar. Dia lebih kurang je. Tapi mungkin akan ada perubahan dekat bahagian, what we call that, dia punya roller, dia punya die shape, dia punya cooling system, etc. Okay? The line consists of basic extruder, okay? Extruder involved of drive, gearbox, and screw. And then we have the extrusion die, the calibration unit, the hold off, the saw, or the cutting devices. And finally, the treatment devices for final finishing and handling. Okay. I think uh, uh, in our labs, uh, we do have extrusion blow films. Okay. Uh, extrusion process. So, uh, it's up to uh, uh, winder and the cutting devices. Okay. This also the extrusion process that I mentioned earlier. You have extruder part and then you have a cooling part and then you have puller and finally the cutting and the removal area. Okay. The extruder drive, drive, it, the extruder drive is electrical in operation and is a gear via a truss bearing to produce a rotational movement of the extruder screw. The polymer fits to the screw is from the fit hopper And the fit may be by gravity, measuring screw, or simple conveying spiral. The extruder barrel and screw of high strength steel and are protected with wear and correction by a variety of hardening and coating treatments such as nitrating and hard chroming. Okay, nitrate is a process used to improve wear resistance of the barrel. Okay, I go. Uh, I explain a bit of this. Okay. Uh, Slightly different from injection molding. Injection molding allow the material to be forced by the movement of the screw. Okay, uh, kalau kita tengok injection molding, dia boleh bergerak. Screw dia boleh bergerak ke belakang. During the rotating, dia akan bergerak ke belakang. Dia akan fill the chamber with the molten polymer and then the force. Okay, different from the extruder. The rotation itself will allow the material to fill in the uh, well, uh, extruder parts, the screw and the barrels. Okay, although uh, the material being fit by the either the gravity itself, the measuring screw, okay, screw yang kita ada tu, ataupun simple conveying spiral. Sebab tu kalau kita tengok screw tu ada conveying spiral. Bila dia rotated, dia akan uh, fit the material and push the material to move forwards. Okay, and eventually it will be melted, molten polymer, and be extruded to a article that you desire. Okay, some of the extruded barrel and screw perlu protection, coated. Okay, coating by nitrating or hard chroming. Kenapa? Okay, macam saya cakap tadi pasal tikar getah. Tikar getah ni sebenarnya, although it's not made from getah lah. 
Okay, it is made from plastic size uh, PVC. Okay, so high uh, amounts of PVC will uh, produce a very elastic P PVC. Okay, so PVC ni dia uh, ada nature of uh, corrosive nature. Okay, sebab apa dia ada chlorine. Okay, during the process when you try to melt the material, you to try to produce a molten polymer and then you will release the chlorine gas. This chlorine gas is very corrosive. It will uh, attack the metal components of the extrusion machine. So that's why any material that contacts, uh, any surface that contacts with the PVC should be coated with nitrating and hard chroming, especially at high temperature. Okay. Bila high temperature ni, dia akan cepatkan proses of corrosion. Okay, sebab tu kita nak. So, <coughs> orang tahu lah kalau material apa yang organik, kalau perlukan coating, then you need to coat your uh, equipment. Okay. The barrel and screw zone into three and seven sections. Okay, slightly similar with injection molding. Screw can be divided between three to seven. Okay, kalau screw of injection molding ada tiga, uh, extrusion might be slightly complex and up to seven, but the function is similar, okay? Which are individually had heated and cool depending on the material and process parameter. The multiple functions of the extruder screw are given in more detail below. The die channel of the polymer melts from the fronts of the screw to form a basic shapes of the desired product. Okay, die, okay, die ni kalau macam injection molding, kita ada mold. For extrusion molding, kita ada die. Dai ni ialah acuan dia lah. Okay. So, bila awak extrude, itulah bentuk yang akan keluar extruded parts tu. Okay. Jangan pula nanti extrusion ada mold. Ah, salah lah lah. Ah, okay. The calibration unit stabilize the forms of the output to detail shapes while the polymer is being cooled. The hall off provide the dragging force to overcome the frictional force in the calibrators and pull the profile through a calibrators. And then we have the saw and cutter that uh, cuts the profile uh, to the desired length. Okay, some sort of the uh, article as the parts uh, being desired by the customer at certain certain length. Okay, our potong ikut uh, panjang yang diperlukan oleh consumer lah. Okay, okay. Additional operations may be performed in a line or at the ends of the line depending on the operations. Okay, additional operation ni. Uh, involving like embossing, like embossing tu bagi macam kita bagi texture. And then we have uh, printing, we have laminating, and then we have corneal discharge treatment, etc. Lah. Hmm. Okay, dia boleh berlaku during the uh, operation itself, masa uh, proses tu berlaku, ataupun selepas. Okay, bergantung uh, produk apa yang buat, uh, properties apa yang warna. Okay. This is the simple illustration or the flow charts of the extrusion process. The material in pellet or powder form fit into the hopper. Hygroscopic material require pre-drying process either before being fit into hopper or inside it. Okay, so untuk hygroscopic material, awak boleh keringkan sama ada sebelum masuk dekat hopper ataupun uh, dalam hopper sendiri. Kalau kita cover uh, uh, additive. Okay, uh, chapter 2, PSC 371 hari tu. I did mention how you are doing uh, the mixing material. Okay, dry mixing, kita ada uh, sama ada without uh, heater ataupun ada heater. Kalau harus copy, you need to induce heat so that you move, remove as much as possible the moisture. Okay, ataupun hopper itself ada um, drying system. Okay. And then the material inside the hopper flow via gravitational force into a barrel known as the feed zone. Okay, commonly, uh, initially, okay, initially extrusion process uh, use the gravitational force to allow the material being uh, forced into a feed zone. Okay, but recently or current trends of industry, there are the other uh, vacuum pump. Okay, diorang sucks the material inside the feeding zone. Uh, so, dia tak ada lah letak ke hopper tu. Dia letak the racks dekat mana awak punya mixing area. Okay, so dia akan sedut masuk dalam awak punya uh, 
hopper ataupun fit zone. And then the material inside the barrel in solid form even though the temperature, T is temperature, set is the melting temperature of the polymer. Okay, temperature only is not enough to melt the material. Okay, kita kena ada shearing effects. Okay, the material are conveyed from a fit zone to the compression zone as the screw rotates. Okay, sama juga macam injection molding. As the screw rotated, you will convey your material to a second zone, which is the compression zone. Shear from the uh, what we call that solids material. Shear similarity are about 50% matte and 50% in solid form. Okay, during the compression, they are can converting that solid into a melt form. Okay, normally the screw design at this zone, the screw depth are shallow compared to the feeding zone. Okay, so the gap between the barrel and the screw itself is very narrow. Okay, so the sempit, so the awa introduce uh, the compression, okay, and um, shearing effects to produce a melted material. Okay, so but saya cakap tadi, temperature itself tak cukup untuk melting the material. Okay, kalau melt pun is not homogeneously melt. So what you need to do is allow the material um, to have a shearing effect. This increase the contact area per volume which lead to better heat transfer, okay. So higher area, better heat transfer from the barrel to the material causing the material to melt. Okay, so as I check up, the shearing effect involved by three uh, phenomena. The first one is material with the material, okay, material with the screw, and material with the barrel itself. Okay, from the compression zone, the material push forwards to the measuring zone. At the measuring zone. The material are all in a melt form and this ensure the obtaining good extruded product as it emerge from the dye. Okay, so bila sampai je dekat metering, it should be fully melt. Uh, so dalam molten state lah. Here the internal heat is built up, increased due to a high shearing effect. Okay, bila berturusan tadi masa ke compression, masuk ke metering is molten, um, um, molten state and then they akan ada sh high shearing effect. High shearing effect occur due to the depths of the screw which are shallow compared to the depths of the screw of compression zone. Yang ni lebih, apa what we call that, mm, shallow, cetek. The very narrow lah, dia punya daripada barrel dengan screw itself. Okay, so drastically increase the contact per area volume. Okay, mana yang tak berapa nak melt lagi tu, bila masuk sampai ke measuring zone, dia akan melt. Okay, dengan high temperature, high shearing, dia akan melt. Okay, the molten polymer pass through the screen pack which is supported by the breaker plates. Okay, screen pack and breaker plate. Screen pack untuk screening any impurities. Okay, kita tak nak dia extrude, keluar uh, satu dekat artikel tu akan ada defect lah. Kan ada impurities. Ataupun kalau benda tu besar, dia akan effect kepada dye. Dye awak akan rosak. So, shapes of the dye tu akan affected lah. And then the... Um, a breaker plate usually uh, the function is to support the screen pack uh, to uh, we call that uh, as we know high pressure will be introduced during the extrusion process so breaker plate we uh, keep on uh, break some of the pressure that bring exit into a screen pack itself and then the molten polymer takes shapes of the dye as it comes from the machine here's uh, the types of extruder Okay, commonly, uh, uh, it's not common lah. Uh, we call that uh, initially. Okay, the extruder divided into a ram extruder or screw extruder. Okay, sekarang ram extruder ni jarang orang guna lah. Dia tak ada involve of uh, screw. Dan dia pakai ram system. And the other yang commonly guna sekarang adalah screw extruder. We go through each of this. The ram extruder. The compound transport by a ram. Saya mention tadi. The compound extruded through dye by a hydraulic piston, the pressure build up in a dye. So, dia tak ada screw. So, apa jadi? You melt dalam awal punya barrel, okay, at certain uh, uh, time, bila uh, your raw material is fully melted, okay, and then you will exert the pressure, okay, using a ram to push the material, go through the dye itself. Okay, usually dia akan menegak macam ni lah. 
Ini bentuk dia. Okay. So, bila material tu dah mm, start to melt. Okay. So, dia akan push this raw material into a dye. So, dia akan keluar. Dia jadi extruded parts. Okay. Advantage and disadvantage of rare extruder. Give more uniform pressure build up. Okay. Better dimensional stability of extruded. Able to extrude a compound at lower temperature. Okay. Because ada pressure yang awak uh, exerts during the uh, uh, extrusion process. Awak push the material. Easy to clean. Applicable for short run. Able to extrude compound with poor flow properties ok bila material yang tak ada uh, high viscosity flow properties is very poor uh, ram extruder can be used sebab awak introduce pressure ok but the, pro the problem is the disadvantage is uh, it is a discontinuous output so berapa banyak material yang awak letak dalam barrel tu banyak material tu saja awak boleh ram dia awak boleh push so panjang material yang awak produce sepanjang itu sajalah Volume dia sikit lah limited. And then prohibitive heating times within the extrusion cylinder. So, dia memerlukan masa yang lebih lama lah untuk melting your material. And finally, air or gas entrapment. Sebab dia tak ada ruang untuk release the gas, gas ataupun air. Sebab kalau awak allow, dia akan reduce the pressure during the ram process. Okay. Next, we go to the screw extruder. Okay, screw extruder kita akan cover banyak what varieties of screw extrusion machines. Okay, for different types of product that commonly used uh, in industry and to produce uh, our daily life products. Okay, screw extrusion process to build a pressure in polymer melt so that it can be extruded through a die or injected into a mold. Most machines are plastic heating. They bring in solids in pellet or powder forms and melt down as well as building a pressure. Okay, the extruder screw has the following basic uh, function to bring the feedstock and this I uh, keep on mentioning which is very important. Uh, bring the feedstock into the extruder and move the material along the screw while at the same time compressing it and removing a volatile to soften the melts by heating in both from internally generated shear force and externally applied heat. Okay, shear force tadi saya dah cakap tadi ada tiga material with material, material with barrel, material with screw. And then we have other external um, heating which is we have a heater at the barrel itself. Okay, and then to mix the melt and produce a homogeneous melt without impurities because you screen the material using a screen pack. Okay, to apply a constant pressure, free of pulsation required to force a material to a die. So, kita, walaupun dia rotating screw, kita tak nak ada pulsation, tak nak ada pusaran berputar material tu. That's why we have a breaker plate, okay, to uh, produce a, a pulsation free, okay. Okay, this is the illustration of a single screw extruder. Okay, extruder can be either single screw or twin screw or multiple screws huh? okay uh, so uh, the process is similar but for twin screw extruder it can be either uh, co-rotating or counter-rotating uh, co-rotating tu maksudnya dia, ber, ber, dia rotate dia berputar pada direction yang sama lah kalau clockwise dia dua clockwise kalau counter-rotating kalau satu clockwise the other one is counter-clockwise uh, faham eh So, it can be ID too. First, kita masuk the twin screw extruder. The first type of extruder. Okay. Twin screw extruder with intermeshing screw, the motion of one screw inside the channel of the uh, other push the metal forward with a very low friction. Heat is controlled depending from the outside source and is not influenced by the screw speed. For example, PVC processing heat sensitive plastic. Okay, and then macam saya cakap tadi, we also have a multi-screw extruder developed for uniformly blending plasticizer, filler pigment, stabilizer into polymer and, it, uh, and in plastic processing. Major use in high quality rigid PVC pipe and large diameter. Okay, some of the industry they use because they use a uh, huge amount of plasticizer and filler pigment or some industry they produce uh, master batch itself. 
So mixing stuff, the raw material with the master bash is the best uh, use the multi screw extruder. Uh, for example, intimation uh, co-rotating screw, screw rotate in opposite direction in Shijakat Tadim, involving in four screw extruder with two stages, twin screw plasticating section, fit into a twin screw discharge section located below. Okay, so kalau kita tengok, memulai dia ada twin screw kat sini, and then you go another two twin screw. Okay, uh, sebab first dia untuk plasticating sahaja, untuk dia soften, and then dia baru masuk dekat bahagian the other two screw untuk mixing of the raw material. Okay, types of polymer extruder. This one is very important. Very important, very important. Ha, saya repeat banyak kali. So, kita okay, tengok eh. Kita akan cover for this chapter uh, extrusion compounding, pipe and tube extrusion, blow flame extrusion, sheet extrusion, extrusion coating, wire coating, root extrusion and profile extrusion. Although, saya mungkin tak cover each of the component each of the uh, extrusion because extrusion uh, component is uh, what you call that the uh, the production line is slightly similar saya akan pergi bahagian yang differ saja yang ma mana membezakan each of the extrusion ni ok tapi all of this type of extruder commonly being used in industry ok more likely if we you can um, understand all of this type of extruder you are free to go to any uh, extrusion uh, industry. Okay. Uh, the first one, extrusion compounding. Okay, extrusion compounding also related with chapter two, the compoundings of the material, pl plastic material. Okay. So, and this, I think I go very fast. Usually, the final step in the manufacturing of raw, uh, plastic raw material for plastic molding and extrusion industry mean the mixings of raw polymer into various additives to produce polymer with suitable properties. Twin screw extruder as a special extruder which has two screw rather than one. Okay. It offers some advantage for compounding. Often handle material with feeding problem. It will be able to produce a good mixing by forcing the melt back and forth from a screw to the other. And then we have venting of the extruder is also efficient with the dual screw giving good exposure of the resin in a vent zone. Okay, often these extruder have self-wiping screw which can push rapidly and efficiently. Uh, so, dia boleh bersihkan sendiri lah. Okay, sebab biasanya untuk uh, screw extruder, uh, twin screw extruder ni, dia banyak guna additive. So, uh, bila banyak guna additive ni, from time to time, you kena bersihkan. You kena push the material. Kalau letak colorant, kena keluar colorant sampai bersih. So, with the self-wiping, uh, uh, self-wiping screw ni, so, jadi proses untuk cleaning the twin screw is much easier. Habis untuk compounding. Okay. Then kita masuk daripada pipe and tubing extrusion. Pipe and tubing system provide reduced width a product at increased line speed. In the past year, over 500 million feet of new cell uh, pipe or tube has been manufactured and sold globally. Okay, dulu uh, yang ni lah. Dia guna untuk buat pipe and tubing. Okay. A variety of material has been demonstrated in both vacuum size and free extrusion process. Uh, including polyolefin, nylon and PVC. Uh, untuk pipe and tubing sangat banyak material guna. Okay. Tak semestinya on polymeric material itself. Okay. Uh, on elastomeric material pun ada yang kita extrude. Okay. Mucell array of hose pipe and tubing are ideal products for the consumer irrigation and automotive markets. Okay, untuk ni kita buat profile atau artikel lah. Yang ni illustrations of the pipe and tubing, eh, extrusion. Sama je, kita ada bagian extruder and then kita ada uh, control system. Uh, as it uh, extruded your article, the extruded parts, the hollow parts, okay, the tubes, okay. And then you go to the cooling units. Here we have a water cooling unit and then we have a chiller to control the temperature. The roller units or the takeoff unit to pull your extruded parts, okay. And finally, we have a cutting unit and the conveyor belt, okay. This process start by feeding plastic material, which is either in terms of pellet, granule, flakes of powder. It doesn't matter what types, uh, which what forms of your raw material, from the hopper into a barrel of the screw extruder. 
The material is gradually melted by the mechanical energy generated by turning screw and their heaters arranged along the barrel. Yang ni saya kata, saya kata tadi, shearing effect tadi. Okay, the mechanical energy generated. Okay, the molten polymer is then forced into a die which shapes the polymer into a pipe that harden during a cooling. Ah, die ni yang memberikan bentuk dia tadi. Okay, bentuk kepada your molten polymer tadi. And then, dia akan, bila awak extrude, dia slightly soften, dia akan go to the cooling untuk harden and solidify. Okay. Next, we go to the blown film extrusion. I think this one you cover with the uh, Amali. Okay, Mak Amali kan? Sebab kita ada uh, equipment ni dekat our labs. Okay. The blown film extrusion, the manufacture of plastic films for products such as shopping bags and continuous sheeting is achieved using a blown film line. This process is the same as a regular extrusion process up until the die. Okay, so sama je sampai kat bahagian die. Okay, maksudnya awak ada hopper, awak ada screw, awak ada barrel, awak ada die. Die dia mungkin slightly different. And then after that, dia ber berbeza. Awak ada blowing system. There are three main types of die used in the process. First one, we have an annular uh, or the cross head. And then we have spider and... Finally, a spiral. Okay. This is the uh, illustrations of the blow film extrusion. Okay. Macam saya cakap tadi, kita ada uh, extrusion, uh, extruder parts. And then, we have a die. And then, from the die, if we blow to the tower, the blow tower, and then we will be flattened, and we will be go to the winder for rolling process. Okay. So, we go to three types of die. Okay, annular dies are the simplest and rely on the polymer mat channeling around the entire cross section of the die before exiting the die. This can result in uneven flow. Okay, then we have a spider die it consists of central mandrel attached to the outer ring via numbers of flakes. Okay, the part the number the spider, so are the numbers of flakes. Eh? While flow is more symmetrical than the annular dies, a number of well lines are produced which weaken the flumps. Okay, sebab so bila ada banyak legs ni tadi, dia akan ada well line. Bagi macam bercantum tu lah. Dia akan weaken kan film yang awak produce. And then we have a spiral die remove the issue of well lines. Okay, tadi kita ada spider die yang ada kelemahan dengan well lines so that we come up with the spiral dies which remove the issue of the well line and asymmetrical flow but are by far the most complex. Although, dia paling bagus lah tapi dia lebih complex and more likely the production uh, slightly lower in order to achieve a uh, dimension, the thickness, etc. Okay, uh, the melt is cooled some, somewhat before leaving the dye to yield a weak semi-solid tube. Okay, yang ni kita panggil uh, freeze line. Okay, freeze line ni yang awak akan nampak daripada mountain kepada uh, solid tu nanti. Semi-solid tube tu this tube diameter is rapidly expanded via air pressure and the tube is drawn upward and roller yielding the plastic in both transverse and drawn direction. Drawn direction, dire, uh, apa? arah yang ditarik lah. Uh, kalau kita tengok daripada bawah ke atas tadi kan. And then, uh, transverse rate direction ialah blue direction. So, our expand the plastic film study. Okay. The drawing and blow, blowing cause the films to be thinner then the extruded tube and also uh, professionally align the polymer molecular change in the direction that seems the most plastic strain. Okay. If the film is drawn more than is blown, the final tube diameter is close to the extruded diameter. Okay. Kalau awak tarik lebih daripada awak blue, so final shapes dia, diameter dia lebih kurang macam die saja. Okay, the polymer molecule will be highly aligned with the drawn direction. Sebab awak tarik lebih. So, dia akan align lebih mengikut uh, arah uh, tarikan uh, awak punya uh, molten polymer tadi. Making the film that is strong in that direction but weak in transverse direction. So, bila awak extruded uh, your blown film, directions of your uh, direction, uh, uh, blown film directions, okay. So, bila awak tarik part tu mengikut arah yang awak belum tadi, okay, dia akan kuat. Tapi kalau daripada tepi, transverse direction, dia slightly weak. Okay. 
A flame that has significant larger diameter than the asteroid diameter will have more strength in a transverse direction but less in drone direction. Ah, yang ni vice versa lah. Okay, kalau tadi drone direction to the quad, yang ni transverse direction dia akan jadi lebih kuat. In the case of polyethylene and other semi-crystalline polymer, as the flame cool, it crystallizes as known as the frost line. Yang ni saya cakap tadi frost line. Okay, biasanya polyolefin ni, bila dia start untuk cool, dia akan nampak frost line. Awak akan tengok uh, dalam Amali punya video Dia akan ada frost line where The uh, what we call the polymer start to recrystallize Okay, kita dah tahu polymer is crystallized structures Okay, semi-crystalline structure And then we'll molten And then bila dia nak recrystallize balik tu Dia akan ada frost line Okay, as the flames continues to cool, it is drawn through a several set of nibs roller to flatten it into a lay flat tubing which can then be spooled and cut. So, bila awak ada blow tadi tu, awak akan ada beberapa series of uh, nib roller untuk flattenkan plastik awak tadi tu. Tadi hollow parts yang besar tadi tu, awak akan flattenkan. Sebab tu awak tengok plastik sampah tu dia nipis kan? Uh, asalnya dia blue besar and awak flatten dia. And then, Awak akan potong mengikut uh, panjang yang awak nak. Right. Um, itu yang 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 berlaku lah. Okay, this is the illustration of uh, manufacturing of plastic bags, bloom films. Okay, awak ada extruder and then awak ada die, ada earring. This is the bubbles that you flow, the extruded parts. And then the collapsing uh, frames, nips roller okay collapsing uh, collapsing frame ni berguna untuk make sure the center during the nips roller uh, to flatten your uh, bubbles and then we have uh, uh, flatten uh, plastic material and go through the roll to roll your your plums okay Blow flame extrusion involve of FFS uh, ataupun form, fill seal and then we have for food packaging, stand up pouches, capsule, lamination flames which is lamination flame kalau operasan di very thin so that uh, it being produced by the uh, blown uh, flame extrusion <coughs> and then we have producing of labels, head care, head care also uh, what we call that the packaging of, of healthcare, bag, sex, agricultural, and reflector sheets. Okay. And then we have a sheet extrusion. Sheet extrusion is slightly similar to the blur flame extrusion, but sheets will produce a slightly thicker flum. Okay. Sheet of flame extrusion is used to extrude plastic sheet of flame that are too thick to be blown. Okay, kalau kata blow flame ni tadi, uh, buat very thin, sheet extrusion dia produce slightly thick. Okay, kalau terlampau tebal, dia tak boleh uh, blow sebab dia akan collapse during the process. So, apa perlu buat? Awak pakai sheet extrusion. Slightly thicker. Okay, there are two types of dye being used. I think three, three types. But kita tengok. First one is T-shapes and the coat hanger. Uh, betul, kita ada tiga. T-shape, coat hanger and fish tail. Okay, later on, I will go through with this. The purpose of this dye is to reorient it and guide the flow of the polymer melt from a single round output uh, from the extruder to a thin, flat, planar flow. In both dye type, ensure constant uniform flow across the entire cross-sectional areas of the dye. There. Yeah. This one is a sheet extrusion. Uh, nampak macam sama kan? Uh, macam uh, mana-mana extrusion. Tapi berbezanya ada di sini. Kita ada series of roll stack. And then we have winder. Okay. Bila awak extrude, keluar kat die. Dalam bentuk sheet tadi, awak flattenkan lagi dengan series of roller. And then you go to the winder. Sheet extrusion cooling is typically by pulling through a set of cooling roll. Which is the calendar or the chill rules. Okay, tadi kita tengok series of roller tu. Roller of calendar tu sendiri. Dia ada cooling effects. Okay, uh, that's why kita panggil cooling rule. In sheet extrusion, this rule not only deliver necessary cooling but also determine sheet thickness and surface texture. Okay, bukan untuk cooling saja, 
dia akan menentu juga sheet thickness so untuk bagi consistency okay setiap series of uh, each of the roller there is a different uh, nib size okay untuk dapatkan thickness yang awak nak dalam masa yang sama some of the roller tu bagi texture texture dia macam rough surface ada bentuk macam-macam lah okay dia bagi macam embossing effect okay uh, Often, co-extrusion is used to apply one or more layer on top of the base material to obtain specific properties such as UV absorption, texture, oxygen permeation, resistance or energy reflection. Okay, untuk sheet extrusion, it, it is very common to have a co-extrusion. Okay, kenapa? Selalunya sekeping plastik yang awak jumpa ni kadang, dia is not from a uh, same material. Okay, there is a series of layer. Okay, each of the layer have different properties. Okay, they can adhere together. Each of the layer ada properties yang berbeza. Maksudnya macam UV absorption, ada yang ada texture, ada yang bagi printing, ada gas permission, ada yang untuk uh, printing itself. Okay. Okay, this is the sheet extrusion, the multi-sheet extrusion. Awak tengok kat sini, kita ada extruder. Okay, kita ada fit stock juga. They mix together. Okay, yeah, there. Then uh, we have a, what we call that uh, the windings of uh, other material. So that when you uh, sheeting the material, okay, you pull this material and we adhere to another uh, substrates and finally will be wind up. Okay, a common post extrusion process for plastic sheet stock is a thermal forming. Okay. There, where the sheet is heated until a soft plastic and forms via a mold into new shapes when vacuum is used, this is often described as vacuum forming. Okay, selain daripada itu, sheet extrusion juga, extrusion uh, films ni, bila awak dapat produce uh, sheets ni, sekeping ni atau films ni, dia juga digunakan untuk thermal forming, untuk other equipment. Okay, nanti kita akan cover, I think, in chapter 7. Okay, what is uh, thermal forming? Uh, thermal forming perlukan uh, plastic sheets untuk produce a final product. Okay, the orientation uh, is the ability, availability, density of the sheets to be drawn of the mold which can vary in depth from 1 to 36 inch typically in highly important and greatly affect forming a cycle time for most plastic. And then we have extrusion coating. What is extrusion coating? Extrusion coating is using a blown or cast film process to coat an additional layer onto existing roll stock of paper, foil or films. For example, this process can be used to improve the characteristic of paper by coating with polyethylene to make it more resistant to water. The extruded layer can also be used as adhesive to bring two other materials together. Okay, extrusion coating ni, very common dengan kita sebenarnya. Kalau awak tengok kan, um, paper bag. Okay, paper bag ni kadang-kadang, awak perasan dia yang jenis, uh, what we call, uh, dia tak kalis air. Okay, ataupun awak tengok air kotak tu. Actually, the air kotak tu, kalau kita, it's made from paper, kotak box kan. Okay, tapi air tu tak keluar. Kenapa? Because there is a thin layer that being coated to prevent water to pass through. Okay, very thin layer. Okay, sebab tu uh, dia boleh gunakan paper. Okay, and then we, you can either use as a foil or film itself. Okay, so selain daripada itu, extrusion coating guna, juga diguna sebagai adhesive layer untuk adhere two material together. Sama ada polymer dengan polymer, polymer dengan fabric, polymer dengan ceramic, polymer what we call it with metal and etc. Okay. Other types of extrusion coating uh, such as for example is TerraPak is commercial example of this product yang saya cakap tadi lah. I coat it semua ni, semua ada coating, polymer coating lah. So that it will protect your uh, uh, goods ataupun uh, food yang dalam tu lah. Eh? TerraPak is multinational food packaging and processing company in Swedish, origin and head office in Lund, Sweden and Lusitania, uh, Switzerland. The company offer packaging, filling, etc. Okay. For road extrusion, okay, this is the illustration of road extrusion. Okay, road extrusion is uh, similar to that, uh, what we call the pipe extrusion. Uh, 
The differ is the rod extrusion is not a hollow part. The solid part. Okay, dia tak ada lubang lah kiranya. Uh, tak ada rongga. So, dia akan extrude a uh, rod extrusion. So, this one is some exercise usually I've been uh, conduct during the process. Okay. So, a rod extrusion can be ideas such as uh, what we call that um, any component that you use such as uh, you know that, that chopsticks, okay, sometimes it's made from extrusion, sometimes it's made from uh, injection molding, okay, this is the right extrusion. I think that's all for, uh, for this chapter, okay, I hope uh, to see you uh, by next chapter, uh, if you have any question, feel free to ask me in our groups, so that I will answer each of your question, and by then, Assalamualaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh, and thank you.